Hi, I'm Roz and I'm the artist behind North Mayo Fine Art. Welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to create water and how to create the ripples in the water. I hope you enjoy the video. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to draw water and the ripples in water. As you can see from the picture that I'm using here. It's beautiful and clear water. It's got some nice white ripples on it. And I want to show you how to recreate that with coloured pencils. So I've already started over in this corner. And I've got the first layer of colour here. So what I've actually done beforehand is I've got a white pencil and I've embossed the paper where all the, the whitest sections of the ripples are in the water. And I've embossed it onto, the, onto the, the paper before I've added any colour to it. So now the white pencil that's down on the paper will act as a resist to the colours that we put on top of it. So as you can see in the, this section that I've already added the first layer to, the, all the white is now staying nice and white, but the colour is going over it without interfering with the white. So I'm just going to carry on just here with the first couple of layers to show you exactly what I mean. So, as I'm colouring, I'm using oval shapes, so I'll slow it down. So as you can see, I'm actually using long ovals and I'm going over the edge of each oval that I've just done with another oval. And I do that because we don't want to actually see any pencil lines on the finished piece. If I went backwards and forwards, you'd be able to see. Let me just show you on this. Just a scratch piece of paper. So if I go backwards and forwards, like this, it doesn't matter how many times I do it, you're going to see the lines. The lines going backwards and forwards. Whereas if I use oval strokes, you can see that you can't actually see any lines of the pencil whatsoever because they're all blending into each other. And that just gives a much um, nicer and uh, a much more blended look to the, the finished pencil work. There. So you can see, you can, it's very obvious the straight lines there. But then, when you look at this one, because you're going over the lines that you've already put down with more lines, they all blur into the same thing, so you can't actually see the pencil lines. But back to the drawing. So what I'm doing now is I'm going over the section that I've already added white to. And I've added a very, very um, light shade of blue, a sky blue, just to actually put some colour down and then I've uh, blended that into the paper. But as you can see, when I get to a white section, the pencil won't stick to the section that I've already embossed in white. It's actually just skimming over that area and the colour is going down onto the paper that doesn't have any colour on it yet. And that's the exact look I'm going for. Now you could always when you're adding the first couple of layers of colour, you could always just leave the sections that are going to be white, but that's very time consuming, having to actually try and draw around a white section with a blue pencil. I personally find that the, resi the resist technique is a much easier technique and it keeps the paper much cleaner doing it this way. So I'm just going over with my first layer of the, the brighter blue. 
and I'm using the circular motions and one thing that's very important is to use a light hand so for anybody that, that doesn't know a light hand is holding the pencil very lightly with your fingers and hardly putting any pressure down on the paper if you put too much pressure on the paper too early you will actually push all the tooth out of the paper and you then won't be able to get as many layers of colour down as you're wanting to for your, your specific piece. So I'm using a very light hand and I'm using circular motions and I'm just going over this entire area just to get all the white sections and to get just some basic colour down on the sections that I want colour to be on. Now, the best way that I find to blend is I use a tool called a uh, silicone colour shaper. Now, you can get these in lots of different sizes. You can find them in a few different craft shops. They were originally um, produced to be used with clay so that you could use, you could um, mould the clay to different shapes and different types of textures. But I've actually found these to be fantastic for blending colour pencil. So now I've got a little bit of colour down in this section. I'm actually going to go over with the colour shaper. And all I need to do is again use a light hand so that I'm not pushing the pencil too hard into the paper and losing the tooth. I'm going to again go in circular motions so that I don't leave any straight lines or straight marks in the paper because we want this to be seamless. As this is, because this is water, you want it to look like water and you wouldn't find any harsh lines in water. So I'm just continuing to go around this area. And I'm blending in this first layer of blue. And you can see that as I'm actually blending over the white areas, the colour isn't going onto the white areas, it's just skimming over the top. Now, don't worry if you do get any pencil onto a white area. If you have put a white area down to, um, to emboss it, as you can see just here, there's two areas of white there that have picked up a, a small amount of colour and that's not a problem because the colour hasn't actually stuck onto that section at all, it's just sitting on top of the white. So I then come in with my Tombow Mono Zero eraser and if I just really lightly go over the area that I know has got white underneath it the colour comes off really easily because it's not actually embossed into the paper it's just sitting on top of the white pencil which is still resisting it so when you bring an eraser and use an eraser over the white section the blue pencil lifts off really easily so you can see that that's brightened those areas up really nicely. So now if we come back to this section here, so if I work on this section here now. So I've got the first couple of layers of pencil down and I've blended them already. And I'm just coming in now and I'm looking at my reference photo all the time. It's really important if you're trying to copy an image or reproduce an image um, if you are, if you do want to work in or try and achieve photorealism, it's really important that you pay attention to the tiny details. So as I'm coming along here, I'm trying to make sure that I keep all the little tiny details that I can see in the original reference photo. And I can see there's lots of little, little tiny strands of colour. And there's little tiny strands of 
white where the the waves or the ripples are actually meeting and then separating again. So I'm just going to carry on going around here. Now because they're very small details you do have to be just a little bit careful not to completely go over them all and just take your time and I always recommend having a nice sharp pencil when you're trying to cover the paper around the small details because if your pencil is blunt it's going to put more colour on the paper than you want so always try and have a sh slightly sharper pencil when you're actually going around the initial details so I'm just continuing to add more layers of colour so you can see there if I slow it down I'm still using a circular motion but it's now a tighter smaller circle compared with the, the larger ovals that I was doing earlier so I'm just finding the, the edge of this white area and I'm going down against the line of the white now as you can see that I'm actually using a straight line there and that's simply because I want to define the edge of this particular ripple I want to define this edge as well but once I've defined the edge I will go in and use the small circular motions again to fill in the rest of the area so if I now come above this white ripple now there are some very small blue details in that but we'll get to that a little bit later in a minute we're just trying to block in the colour so we're just defining the edges first and you can see that even though I'm going very very close to the white the colour isn't transferring onto the actual white pencil that's been put down on the paper beforehand so there's a little very bright white detail here and I want to keep that so I'm going to go around it again and then I'm going to use my circular motions from that line to blend that line out so that it's invisible and it all looks seamless now of course there will be times when you need to use stray pencil lines for things like animal hair, whiskers um, even certain textures you would need to use straight lines for but you need to when you're, when you're doing something like water or even the dolphin skin when we get to that you need to look at the image and you need to understand which texture is needed for which section so I'm now just blending I'm actually blending this line out with the pencil rather than with a blending tool because I know I need to add more colour to that section so I'm just going over with the same colour pencil I'm using a slightly more pressure now just to actually get, get a little bit more colour down on the paper to actually blend this harsh line now when I say I'm using slightly more pressure I'm not pushing down hard at all let me just show you on this piece of paper again so when I talk about using light pressure I'm holding the pencil about halfway up I'm not putting any pressure on the pencil from my fingers so I'm, I'm using a very very light hand so you can see how faint that blue is actually coming out or coming onto the paper because I'm not pushing down at all so what I'd do is I'd add, a, add the first layer of colour and then I'd go over again, again with a light hand and I'd add a second layer of colour always using circular motions for anything that isn't hair and once that's been added I'd then go over and I'd add a third layer 
again with a very, very light hand. And you can see on that section there, you can see that there's no harsh pencil lines. It's blended in really nicely. It's covered the entire area that I'm actually working in. But it's all been done in a very, um, well, in a, in a very light way, really. Now, let me show you the difference between this and using a heavy hand. So I'm now going to go over and I'm going to do it with a much heavier hand. So you can see immediately I'm putting a lot more pressure on the pencil with my fingers. And you can see that the underneath my fingers are going red and the top of my finger and the top of my joint and around my thumb and my nails are going white because I'm actually holding the pencil quite hard and I'm using a lot of pressure. So that's just one layer of pencil using a heavier hand compared to this that's got three layers of pencil. I'm now going to find it hard to put any more pencil down on this area because I will have pushed the tooth of the paper. Now the tooth of the paper, for anybody that doesn't know yet, is if you look at a piece of paper, you can actually see where there's hills and troughs, which basically means a piece of paper would have lots of little hills and troughs like that. And they're absolutely tiny, so a lot of people actually wouldn't see them. But when you're colouring in, if you use a really light hand, you get the colour gently over the, the layers that you're adding. You get the colour into the hills and troughs. But then once you've added a first layer of colour, you can then go over it with another layer and another layer. And you can keep layering up until you get the results that you want. If you push down very hard on your first layers, you're basically crushing these peaks which enable you to actually lay the pencil and it's going to end up looking very very flat but you're then going to have trouble adding any more layers on top of that section which is why I always recommend using a light hand and also using circular motions because it just takes away um, this sort of embossing of the paper in the first layers which then would stop you stop any more layers from sticking to the paper because there's nothing for the colour to actually stick to once the tooth of the paper has gone. Well we'll come back to the, the drawing now and I'm just continuing through here. Now I'm looking at my reference photo all the time. The reference photo as you can see is directly underneath and it's stuck down with a little bit of tape so that I can, it's very easy for me to move for the different sections that I'm working on. I apologise if you can hear all the birds. They're actually crows outside. And we always, we always get them in the morning and they're noisy for about the first hour of the day. And then they seem to quieten down. So I'm looking at my reference photo all the time. So every time I work on a tiny section, I look at the reference photo and then I start working. But I'm always referring back to the reference photo so I can see here that this is actually there is a little space between a big section of white and this small section so if I just go around these sections and again because the white has been put down beforehand it's resisting the blue and that's basically all the white that's all I'm using the white for here at the minute is to keep the whitest areas of the paper white but it means that we don't have to be quite so perfect with the blue we can go over the area and it won't disturb it or affect the actual paper underneath the area we don't want to cover so I'm coming in now I'm just going around all these shapes. Now some of these shapes aren't as bright white as others. So I've put a small bit of, pen, of white pencil down on it. But then I've actually left some of it so that I can pick up some of the colour. But it's not pure white. So the areas that I haven't actually used the white quite so much or haven't pressed down quite as hard. That would pick up a small bit of colour which is what I want. So it's just a case of looking at your own reference photo and deciding exactly where you want the brightest whites to go 
and where you're happy for it to pick up a small bit of colour. So again, not using a heavy hand, I'm just going in oval motions. And what I'd recommend is if you've got a, a larger area to actually work in. So for example, there's quite a lot of blue here. I would use longer ovals like this. But if I'm in a tight area, like in here for example, I've used smaller circles to get the colour down. It's, it's just personal choice if, you'd, if you feel happier doing the larger ovals then that's not a problem at all if you want to stick to doing the smaller smaller areas then that's absolutely fine too so on this section here there's a very very white area and at the minute I've only got one layer of the blue pencil down so I'm going to start working on this area now to actually build up the colour so I'm going to sharpen my pencil because at this stage it still looks sharp, but it's not as sharp as I would like it to be to go around this area. Now, another thing that I've learned over the years and I find very useful is if you actually use your pencil and then can you see me, I actually rotate the pencil a little bit in my fingers and then I work on the next little bit and then I rotate the pencil again and I work on another little bit. That is actually to help keep the pencil sharper for longer so it's just a little tip that I've picked up if you use only one side of the lead that's going to get very dull very quickly whereas if you use one side of the lead and then you turn it a little bit and then you use that section and you turn it again and you use that section it's effectively keeping your pencil sharper for longer so I'm just going to really quickly sharpen this pencil So now I'm going to start on this area here. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to work on the, the very bottom line first because it's actually a very, very sharp. There's a very there's a lot of definition between the white of the ripple and the blue of the water. And I want to make sure that I actually get the definition in. And I get the tones and the values in place early on. So when I first started drawing, I tried to get work finished as soon as possible. But then over time I realised that that isn't the way to get the best results. So now I will take the time actually working on these small sections to get them looking exactly how I want. I've learned to have a lot more patience when I'm drawing now. And it is working in my favour. Now can you see here there was a white the white section was running all the way down to there. But when I've actually looked at the reference photo I can see that not all of it is white. Some of it is actually blue. Can you see how easy it was to put that pencil down on the paper? That's because there was no white underneath it. So it's, the paper has taken all the colour, has picked all the colour up. As I come round here, this section as well needs to be a darker blue. I'm using circular motions all the time. Now when I'm drawing at my normal speed, I know it's quite difficult to see the shapes I'm actually using to colour. But I always use either an oval or a circle. Unless I'm doing something that requires very, very sharp, straight lines. So I'm coming back in here now. And I am still trying just to divide, define this area a little bit more. So I'm going to keep going round in again. A light hand. And I'm just defining all these different areas. 
and I am um, sharpening up the edges but not sharpening them up so much that you can actually see the lines. So I'm going to come back to this one now. So I can see now that this line goes up to there and then it comes out and goes in a, a bend almost and it goes up towards there. And this is a very very straight section and goes round. Now, there are areas in the white that I haven't covered in the white pencil, so there's a, a small circular area here that hasn't actually been covered in white, and you can see how well the blue is actually covering the paper in that little gap. And there's another one just here where I didn't add any white pencil to it because I knew it needed to be darker. That's that section there. And then there's a nice long section just here which also doesn't have any white on it. So you can see now that I'm actually defining this ripple very nicely. And I've only used one pencil so far. Because depending on how many layers you put down and also depending on the colours that you use that will decide on how many pencil, pencils you will need to use. So I'm just coming in and there's a little tiny section up there. I'm coming in again here. There's a very small white section just there. I want to make sure we keep defined as the as the white pencil. So you can see that the actual depth of colour is increasing with these extra layers that I'm putting on the paper. So now I've got the fur, I think it's time to start adding a little bit more colour to it. Now there's just a little section there that I can see that doesn't have the bright white on it. And this is much more of a round area. And as you can see, this is actually resisting the blue to a certain extent, but it's not completely white. And that's because I've added some white to the paper, but I've not actually made it as pure white as, say, this section here. And that is simply just by how heavy you actually lay the white pencil down. Now, let me just show you on this little scrap piece of paper again. So I'm going to lay down some white pencil here. So I'm using a fairly light hand. I'm not pushing down too hard. I'm not embossing the paper. I'm just adding a small bit of colour to it. So I've gone over it several times with a light hand. I'm not pushing down hard at all. Now if I do another box next to this, I'm going to just move off my drawing. If I put another box next to this and I push down really rather hard, and you can see I'm putting more pressure on the paper, and you can see that it's I'm using more force in my in my fingers to actually push down hard compared to the very, very light hand that I'm using here. Well, I don't even need to use that finger, I'm actually doing it so lightly. But I'm really pushing down hard for that one. So now I've got that down, I want to show you the effects. So this is the area where I made it nice and 
did a, a light hand. And again, I'm using the ovals. And you can see it's picked up a small bit of the blue, but you can definitely still see that it's much lighter than if it was just solid blue. And that's because we have used a light hand to apply the white and we've applied several layers of it. Now this square next to it that we were, I was very, very heavy handed with. Now this one, it will be very obvious. And I will find it very hard actually getting it to pick up colour. Now, if I go over that, can you see the difference? This one is still accepting some of the blue pencil because it's not embossed the paper to the extent that it won't accept any more colour. So, even though it has got a certain amount of white to it, it's not completely white and it's not refusing any colour. Whereas this box here, I push down very hard. I've embossed the paper, I've completely flattened the tooth of the paper with the white pencil and when I go around with the blue, none of it is actually picking up on over the white. So this is how you keep your white very, very white and this is how you could add a small amount of the colour if it's not as pure white but it's still, um, it will still resist a lot of the colour. So that's just a quick tip for using the white pencil on areas that you want to keep white and that will work with anything that works with fur, feathers, um, machinery, metal, basically anything that you, you need to keep white. Now even if I did one solid, if I wanted to do a whisker for example, and I know we don't need to do whiskers in this, in this drawing, but I just wanted to show you what I've actually got talking about it. If I wanted to draw a whisker I would draw a very, and I'm just going to do it here, I would draw a very harsh line and I'm pushing down a lot and I'm trying to emboss the paper but I'm just going over the same small area and I'm going to do another one here. So now I'm going to come over with the blue and as I actually come over the whisker and I am now using straight lines, I'm not using ovals because with fur and feathers you need the, the defined lines to show the fur. But can, you can see there that because I've used the white beforehand and I've pushed down very hard and I've actually pushed down hard enough to not only resist the colour the colour that you're putting down because the white's down there but I've actually embossed the paper enough that no more colour will actually go onto that area so that is now white and you can continue to work around that if you were doing whiskers or something like that and no colour would actually go onto those sections so that's a really good way of actually drawing whiskers and things like that is you put the white down first and then you go over with the colour. So let's get back to this drawing now. So I'm now still working in this area and I've just added another layer of the colour. And I've added another layer of the colour around this very bright white section here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to now go to my slightly darker blues. Now I've got two slightly darker blues here. and One is much more of a turquoisey blue than the other. But I'm going to use a combination of both of them for the look that I want. So now we've got the lighter shades coloured in. I'll work on this section. Now I've got the light shades actually built on. What we're going to do is we're going to come over with some darker colour. Still using a light hand and using the circular motions. And we're going to start adding the 
darker colour to where we can see it on our reference filter. We want to keep using it and keep going in the small circular motions. I just spotted a little area there that needs some of the dark pencil. I'm just defining the lines around that area. Right, again, I'm using the ovals. I know you're probably sick of hearing about my ovals and circles, but it is important to actually know how to create an effect using specific techniques and this is the best technique that I've actually found to get a good few layers of colour. Now I'm talking anything between three layers and eight or nine layers you can achieve using a light hand in a circular motion. So it means that you can get much more colour down on the paper and you can you have you then have the opportunity to do a much wider selection of different techniques. Whereas if you push down too hard at the beginning, you can't then do anything with it and you can't get the tooth back. So I'm going in my circular motions and I'm just covering in the areas where the darkest colours I can see on the reference filter. So it comes up here and you can see how far back I'm actually holding the pencil and that's because the further back you hold the pencil the less pressure you can put on it. So by me holding the pencil up here I have very little control of how much pressure is actually put on the pencil Whereas if I held it down here, I have complete control and it's much easier then to press down quite hard than it is if you're holding it up here. And I'll continue to hold it up there whilst I get these first, the first layers of the dark blue into it. I will just continue in this circle. So I'm just continuing again. Now if any of you have any questions about any of my work, whether it be this piece or any other piece of my work, please do feel free to either comment under the video or contact me privately on Facebook or Instagram because I love receiving questions and being able to actually give you an answer that makes it easier for you to, to actually draw a piece of art that you want to create. So now I am just going to keep going up here just a small bit. Those birds do like making a racket in the morning. So I'm just working working on this sort of section right in the middle there, just so you can see. Then you can actually see the difference between this middle section and all the colour around it, which is still only the first couple of layers. So now I've got th that shade of the blue, the more turquoisey blue down. I'm going to come in now with a a darker, um, sort of more pure blue, because I want the I want the colours to actually be able to blend with each other on the paper. And because I'm actually 
I'm now three, I think it's three layers in, three or four layers in. I can now push down with a slightly heavier hand. Now, I don't mean push down very hard at this stage. I mean, just use a slightly heavier hand to actually apply this next layer of pencil on. Keeping going around and working our way down this section. And you can see now that I've actually added some of the darker blue to it there. So that's now mixing with the turquoisey blue underneath and giving, giving me a really nice colour. So now I've added that section and I will do this to this whole area but you don't need to actually sit and watch me draw that whole area in blue. So now I've got this, this small section actually down with the darker colour. What I want to show you now is these white sections that have been The white sections that have actually, um, we've kept white now, we can add, once we've sharpened this pencil, this is what I mean about this pencil now, although it looks quite sharp, you can see that I've actually used this side more than the other side, so I've got a, quite a sharp point on this back edge, but no sharp points anywhere else, so this needs sharpening before I use it again. And you can now see that there's a much finer point on the pencil there. So I can now come in and I can come in to some of the white areas that are very, very bright white. And I can actually start just to soften them out a little bit and to add just a touch of colour to them. Because no, no matter how bright, no white is pure white that you find on the in the sea. It's a reflection of the colours around it. So you can see there that I'm using a fairly light hand, but I've just added a small bit of colour to that white area there. And I'm just coming in around this area here. And this one above, there is a a defined line there and then just in the centre there is some colour so I'm just going around now and just adding the tiny bits of colour to the the ripples that need it now as I showed you earlier if you use a very light hand with the, the white you can pick up some of the blue and that's what's happened here is there is actually a decent section of this ripple that actually has some blue in it. Now it's not a deep blue like the like the sea, but it is a def very definite blue that we need to add. So I'm going over and I'm using a light hand with this because we don't want it to be too dark. But I'm just going over it there like that. And then just adding a few more sections of the colour going down this part of the wave as well, or the ripple. And you can see it's picking up very small amounts of the blue. It's not picking up too much of the colour. But that's actually added a lot of depth to that particular ripple. And there are also a few little feathery sections to this ripple. And I left those white before I started colouring so that they would stay defined. So it's just a case of working through your drawing, looking at your reference photo a lot. 
and using the techniques that you've learnt to get the results you want. So we're just going to keep going on the, the little white ripples. And just get some of them toned down just a touch. But at the same time, being able to erase sorry, lost my eraser being able to erase some of the blue from ripples that need to be slightly more white is still easy to do which is good so This section here It's got a straight, quite a straight line there So can you see how even though I hadn't coloured it Because I'm using the circular motions That's actually helped blend that in beautifully So now you can't actually tell that that Was blending afterwards so, and up here again, there's a section here where we seem to have lost the white. So just picking it up again. And now we're going to go back round here, making sure that we add all the colour that we need to just to def define it slightly more. Now, if I decided that this blue here was actually too dark. What I could do is get a bit of the lighter, the initial colour that I put down, the lightest blue. And I could go over this dark section with the slightly lighter blue. And that would not only blend it in, or blend it even more, which is never a bad thing. It also means that it would actually whiten this area up slightly. Like that. And then I'll come through with with the same colour I think actually. I'm going to come through under here and I'm going to come over there and there's a very definite separation of those two sections and also of this section here so I'm just going to come down, add in colour and again holding the pencil down actually past halfway down the pencil to make sure that I keep quite a light hand now there's a couple of tiny sections there I'm not even sure whether you'll be able to pick them up which the pencil doesn't seem to be wanting to go into one of the, the dips, if you like, of the paper. So what I would do then 
So I'd actually hold the pencil on the point. So instead of holding it as you normally hold a pencil, I'd hold it on the point. And I would literally just go in and fill in those two little tiny dips because it would be an awful shame to spend all this time working on, on the drawing and then when you've finished it's looking a bit patchy. So take the time to actually do it properly. Now, another way that you could <coughs> blend this a little bit would be again using the blending, the colour shaper. So I would come in and without contaminating any other section, I would come in and just very gently blend. Now, again, I'm using a circular motion for the actual blending tool because we want it to blend out to be beautiful and smooth and have a very, very gentle effect rather than being rather than it being a harsh blend. Once it to be a very smooth blend. So the, can you see how this section here now looks much more complete than the sections around it even? Because I've added now four or five layers of colour there. I've also touched up the the white of the ripples slightly. And I've got a, a blend of different colours as well. The the best piece of advice I can give anybody is when you're when you're actually colouring something in, if it say for example it's water as we're doing here, it's not all one shade of blue. There are lots and lots of different shades of blue, different highlights, different shadows, and you need to take the time to actually look at the, the image properly and make a decision as to how far you want to go and how many, how much of the image do you want to try and reproduce as best you can. So I'm always aiming to have a photorealistic finish. So I will look at the original image for hours and hours and hours as I'm working because no matter how well I think I can draw water or how well I think I'm able to do any of the aspects of a drawing. My memory is not good enough to be able to memorise and visualise something and get it absolutely perfect, which is why I rely heavily on my reference photos because I've then got the reference sample in front of me all the time and I can refer back to that whenever I need to. It just, it makes life easier and it also will make your drawing the best it can be if you're actually following the, the original image closely it means that your image will end up looking very similar to the original one if you capture all the details. So I'm just actually now going to go over this bottom section of this particular ripple because there's much more blue to it than I originally put down. So this is basically how you draw water. It's a case of adding the initial base layers and then adding more depth to it using various different colours. But it's also as important, in the, the two most important things that I would say with any drawing would be your values, getting your lights light enough and your darks dark enough. So for example, this is a very, very bright ripple. There's hardly any colour on the ripple at all. 
So this has to stay as bright as possible in order to, to have the values for this specific ripple in place. Now, the darkest section of the water needs to be dark enough because if it's not, it's not going to give an accurate representation. You need to get your values correct, even if it takes time. But once you actually practice and you learn about your your values and you learn about the lights and the the darks and getting them in proportion to the rest of the drawing, everything else will fall into place. So, so that's where I'm going to leave the drawing this morning. So you can see how by adding multiple different layers of, the, of different shades of the blue, you've got this really deep, rich colour. But by adding less layers, you've got this nice, very, very sort of pale colour. Now obviously I will be adding more to this because that, that section is not complete. Um, you also now have been shown how to add the darker sections of the ripples and how to blend it to or how to blend it in general to give a really nice soft finish without having any harsh lines in it so i hope you've enjoyed this video if you have enjoyed it please give me a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and also hit the gray bell next to the subscribe button and then you'll be notified every time i bring a new video out thanks for watching